Welcome back to another realistic rebuild I have for you guys here today on Madden 20. Today it's going to be of the Browns. Quickly here though, before I get into the video, if you guys are not yet subscribed to the channel and if you end up enjoying this video, I would greatly appreciate it if you could hit that subscribe button down below. I would love to have you guys back for my next upload. I would also massively appreciate it if you could hit that like button down below. And while you're down there, if you're interested, you can check out my Twitter, my Discord, and my second channel in the description. Let's start going over this team though. The Cleveland Browns are an 80 overall, 81 offense, 79 defense. I think a bit of the team regret rest or something because when I loaded up the roster their defense I think was a little bit higher of an overall maybe regression hit them when I sent by the Super Bowl I don't know or maybe some players got moved around or something the quarterback here for us is Baker Mayfield and he will 100% be the quarterback the rest of the time here he plays really well in Madden of course didn't have the best season in real life but he had a really promising rookie year I do think Baker Mayfield will be a really solid quarterback one day in the NFL I don't think he's bad right now it was a weird season like the Browns just had a totally weird season in general they definitely underperformed by pretty much everyone's standards like the Browns were super hyped going into the season I don't think many teams could have actually lived up to that hype maybe like the Chiefs since they won the Super Bowl but like the Browns seem like a Super Bowl or bust team this year based on the hype that was going around from the fans and stuff like that because of all the transactions they made but because of all that hype we have a really good team in the game they're only an 80 right but they have so much potential they play out of their minds let's continue here talking about the team Nick Chubb is the starting running back and he is definitely emerged as one of the best running backs in the NFL at this point Nick Chubb is so good he was probably their best offensive player this year 97 break tackle is incredible 93 carrying 92 speed he can truck well he is extremely well rounded 64 catching is an idea deal but he can even catch the ball if you really need him to at least in Madden here Kareem Hunt is the backup he's still very good I'm probably gonna let him go even though I'm pretty sure I've seen reports that the GM wants to keep him long term or something there's no reason to pay a backup running back that much money in Madden there is absolutely no reason for it I'm sorry if you're not about that move but I'm not bringing Kareem Hunt back to the team when we have Nick Chubb who is better younger and has a better development trait at wide receiver though we do have Odell Beckham Jr didn't have the best year of course but he is still a solid receiver he's 27 years old he's getting up there in age but he's a 90 overall superstar development he should be perfectly fine the rest of the time here for us Jarvis Landry is an interesting receiver because he plays really well in the game but he's also really expensive so he's making around 15 mil on average the next couple seasons if he can produce I'm fine keeping him but if he doesn't play all that well we may have to look elsewhere honestly I could probably have him play the slot and have Odell be the number one and then we don't have to mess with receiver at all we even have okay enough wide receiver threes on the team like Rashard Higgins is fine there we have Taewon Taylor who isn't awful he's a 72 we can always bring in some other random free agent guys as well I'm not going to really worry about receiver this entire time but a position group I do have to worry about is the offensive line their offensive line is not that good Joel Batonio is solid he's a really good left guard JC Treader is a good center but other than that, nobody else here should be starting the rest of the time. I'll probably have a few of these guys start this next season because I doubt I can draft three offensive linemen or sign three offensive linemen or something. I'll do my best to try to change this offensive lineman group by next year as much as I can. We'll see what happens though. David Njoku is a really good tight end as well. He's still very young. He's fine for us here on Madden. He should develop. On the defensive side here, we have some really cool players like Joe Schobert's a cool guy. He is superstar development, 26 years old. He's usually in defensive player of the year. So hopefully we can bring him back to the team. I'm pretty sure he's an impending free agent right now. Christian Kirksey isn't that great anymore. He's a 74 overall still isn't too bad we can probably get a couple years out of him left and then Mac Wilson is actually very solid I really like Mac Wilson one year of experience of course he was just a rookie out of Alabama he's 74 overall 85 hit power 84 speed not a bad linebacker at all he can definitely develop well for us in the secondary we have Demarius Randall here starting at free safety and I'm pretty certain he's also a free agent this current season I'm not sure if we can bring him back maybe I'll give him like a one or two year deal I don't really want to bring him back long term and then Morgan Burnett isn't really that good I don't really want him on the team all that much longer into the future he's a 72 overall and he's like in his 30s so I kind of want to just move on from him but at cornerback we have Denzel Ward who's one of the best corners to have in this entire game at one point he had superstar I guess that got demoted to star but he is still so good and so young he's easily going to be our number one corner the rest of the time here I think Greedy Williams could probably develop well too he was a rookie this past year as well 73 overall another player who I think used to have star now he has normal but he's still very young I think he can develop perfectly fine on the defensive line we have miles garrett who at one point was an x-factor but of course he went down because of the season he had it was a pretty interesting one i think most people can say but <laughs> miles garrett is still a freak he's still so good he got reinstated as well so we're gonna keep him here 93 overall he should be fine for us 
Olivier Vernon, I've heard rumors of him potentially getting cut. Maybe I'll do that at some point. How many more years does he have left on his contract? I think he's heading into his final year of his contract, so maybe we get rid of him. I'm not exactly sure what to do yet. I'll have to see what I do in the offseason and in free agency and stuff like that. Maybe we can cut him. Like, if we can sign, like, Yannick Ngakwe or something, maybe then we go ahead and release Olivier Vernon. I don't know. But Sheldon Richardson and Larry Ogunjobi are at defensive tackle. And Larry Ogunjobi has superstar development now. Okay, development trait increased for the Super Bowl week. Perfectly fine on my end. So there are the Cleveland Browns. They are a really good team in the game. They're super cheesy. Hopefully the cheese can be on our side for this one. Who has to come back to the team though? So I mentioned Kareem Hunt. I mentioned Demarius Randall. Joe Schobert, another player I mentioned. I want Joe Schobert back on the team. I don't know why he always hits free agency. They have enough money to bring him back. I'm guessing that's why he always hits free agency. He just didn't accept that contract. Should I tag him? I don't know if I want to franchise tag him or just try to give him a long-term deal in free agency. I think I could probably get away with that because I really do want him back on the team. I'm just going to pay him in free agency. I don't want to just give him a franchise tag. I'll figure it out in a second, but let's advance by here and hop into free agency. We should be able to sign him relatively easily. I doubt he's getting like 120 points. He usually doesn't get that many, but of course the regular free agents are here. All the guys you typically see. Devin McCourty could actually be a player I go after. On like a one or two year contract, I would gladly take an 88 overall superstar x factor free safety especially since we don't have demarius randall anymore 107 points i'm perfectly fine paying him that and then joe schobert i'm going to give a contract to as well i'm gonna give him a pretty big deal i guess it'll be 100 points let's up that even more just to make sure i get him because sometimes recently i've been getting rejected by some of these players who i think should accept 109 that's probably a bit of an overpay but i just want to make sure i get him I would be so mad if he <laughs> rejected that. Okay, so we landed Mike Hilton. We did not get Devin McCourty. That's actually really unfortunate, but we did get Joe Schobert. At least we got back Schobert. I really wanted Devin McCourty, man. I'm pissed. We ended up getting Rodney McLeod then to start at free safety for this next year. I'm okay with that, but I don't want him long term. I think I only gave him a one year contract. We can also talk about some fifth year options, and it's for Miles Garrett. That's probably worth it. I guess we'll give it to him then. Why not? Miles Garrett's a really good player. We'll get him back on the team for at least one extra season here. We have another fifth year option this time though for David Njoku. I won't be doing this one, but we'll probably still bring him back at the end of the season. We are now in the 2020 NFL draft and I made some changes here. I'll show you guys what they are in a second. I changed what Chase Young's position is just to see if I can get him to go to the Redskins. I made him a right outside linebacker. I also moved Montez Sweat to left outside linebacker on the Redskins. I'm doing everything in my power to get Chase Young on the Redskins. I really hope they take him. Right outside linebacker is their second need, according to the trades and stuff behind quarterback. So now let's advance by the Bengals pick. They should still go Joe Burrow, and they do. Okay, so now the Redskins, do they finally take Chase Young? They still go Jeff Okuda. Why are they taking Jeff Okuda? All right, well, now they don't have a right outside linebacker. I'll move Montez Sweat back again, I guess. I don't know how to get the Redskins to take Chase Young. I don't know how to do it. Maybe if I lower Jeff Okuda, they will, but I don't want to do that. Maybe now he goes to the Lions. Can I edit the draft board right now? I don't think I'm able to. If I am, I'll move him back to defensive end. I can't edit the draft board right now. I didn't think you could. That'd be kind of glitchy. But if he goes to the Lions, I'll move his position around if I need to. Okay, so he does go to the Lions. He's a right outside linebacker. Maybe that works for them. I don't know. What defense do they have right now? Because I'm pretty sure the Lions defensive playbook is like a bit of a hybrid kind of defense. So maybe this works out. But it turns out the Lions use the Eagles playbook. So they're running a 4-3. So I should probably have him be defensive end. Unless he's just rushing off the edge regardless just because of how good he is. That could be what happens here. I don't know. We'll, we'll figure it out though. We'll definitely figure it out. The Giants go with Andrew Thomas at pick number four. And then Tua probably goes to the Dolphins here. No, it's actually Jedrick Wills. That would have been a cool player to get. I didn't think we'd be able to land him. But here at pick number 10, I think I know who I'm going to go with. It's going to be an offensive lineman. I really need a tackle on this team. And I think it's going to be Makai Becton. So let's see who's still here. It's Makai Becton or I can go with Tristan Wirfs. And this is a really tough decision, to be honest. I don't know which player to go with. I don't think anything really changed here. Tristan Wirfs, who is supposed to be better? Late first round projection. I don't remember the exact overalls of these guys. Mid first round projection. Makai Becton is a higher overall. We're going to take him. He's a 74 overall with normal development. Okay, that's kind of unfortunate that he only has normal development, but he is absolutely massive. So that's a cool player to, to end up landing. I don't really think you can go wrong with a lot of the first round tackles in this class. I just knew I needed to get one of them. Now in the second round here, we have pick number nine. Also, it says Anthony Jennings didn't go to a college. That just happens every once in a while because of some of the stuff that happens whenever you change around the draft class. Sometimes it'll mess up the colleges and I don't know why it does that, but I do see a really enticing player. And I think I have to take him in Xavier McKinney. Let me see who else is down here. Like maybe Trayvon Diggs could be pretty cool. He would be quite good, to be honest. Austin Jackson wouldn't be a bad right tackle because I could still use some offensive lineman help. 
but I really want Xavier McKinney. He's a really solid player. He may go in the first round in real life, but I've also seen mocks of him not going in the first round. So I thought second, like early second was pretty fitting for him. Some people think Xavier McKinney is like the best safety in the class, depending on whether or not you consider Isaiah Simmons a safety or not. Some people think Xavier McKinney could be better than Grant Delpit because of Delpit's tackling issues I've recently seen. Anyway though, Xavier McKinney, 89 speed, 76 zone coverage, 92 acceleration. He should be a really good strong safety for us. I know he just signed Will Parks, but I'm honestly still okay having McKinney on the team. Why is KJ Hamler still available? I feel like there's no chance he makes it to the third round. It's a possibility, but he's probably going at least in the second. I'm gonna go with Justin Jefferson here, see what he is all about. He's a 70 overall, ranked number 67. Check him at number 74, normal development for him as well. He's a really good receiver in this class. There's a decent chance he doesn't make it to the third round, but you never know with some of these receivers. Like last year, a lot of people thought DK Metcalf would have been like a top five pick. And he ended up going in the second round because of some of the stuff that happened. But KJ Hamler is still available. Why doesn't he get drafted, man? He's so good. <laughs> I didn't want to take him just because I take him quite frequently, to be honest. I think at this point, though, we can probably go offensive lineman because I could still use another one. Let me point this out again for another time in case you're new. Walker Little is a 12 overall because he's not in this draft class. He shouldn't be. I don't think there's a way to take players out of draft classes. So that's why he's still here. I think I'm going to go Ben Cleveland with this position because we can still use a guard. So welcome to the team, friend. He's a 68 overall normal development. He's probably going to be a starter. We got a lot of normal development players, but it's actually okay because they will be starting on the offensive line pretty much regardless because of how many holes we have on the offensive line. I think I might fill another one to be honest in Trey Adams. This player is only down in draft boards because of his injury concerns. From what I've, I've read a little bit about him because he used to be a first round projection in a lot of other draft classes. And then I didn't see him going in the first round in any mocks. So I looked up why. And apparently it's because of his injury concerns. I'm going to take a shot at him though here in the fourth round. And he's actually still a pretty high overall because he is a solid player when he's on the field. He's a 67 overall. We had him in our Rams rebuild and he actually played really well for us. So I think he can probably play right tackle the rest of the time here. We're just going to have a really young offensive line for this next year. Three of the positions are going to be rookies, which probably isn't really that smart to do in real life. But who cares? This isn't real life. It's Madden. I'm just going to simulate then to the end of the draft here. I don't really care too much about this pick. I guess at that point then I should just trade this one away. Yeah, okay, we can get a fourth round draft pick next year. I'll be taking that. Let's see who I want to trade away with, though. I think the worst team there is actually the Vikings. And by that, I just mean like the most inconsistent. The Vikings can sometimes be really poor. I feel like all those other teams are usually really solid. I think this draft went extremely well. We got a ton of starters, right? So we have a new starting left tackle, probably a new starting strong safety. We might have a new starting third receiver. I don't know if Justin Jefferson will play all that much. We have a new starting guard and we have a new starting right tackle. We also got Brian Lewerke. Sure, I guess we have a backup quarterback now. That's fine, but let's see who went after pick number five. Tua ended up going to the Chargers, Jerry Judy there to the Panthers, Isaiah Simmons goes to the Cardinals, Josh Jones to the Jaguars, Makai Becton, of course, goes to our team at number 10. I could have went with Tristan Wirfs, he's a 73 overall. He also has hidden development trait. I didn't actually know that. I would have rather had Tristan Wirfs on this team, but it's okay. We got Makai Becton, he's perfectly fine in my opinion. The team here for the first full season is going to be an 80 overall, 81 offense, 80 defense, pretty balanced there across the football. We changed the offensive line a ton in the draft exclusively. I didn't sign anybody in free agency. We just drafted all of these guys. Ben Cleveland, Trey Adams, Makai Becton are all going to be starters here. We also have a new third receiver here in Justin Jefferson. I may as well start him. Like, he's a pretty good receiver. He's a 70 overall. Let's see what he can do his rookie season. And then defensively, we added Xavier McKinney to the secondary. Rodney McLeod is also the starting free safety. Will Parks is just going to be backing up McKinney. I went after Parks in case I wasn't able to get Xavier McKinney. I really wanted to get him in the second round if I could. And I just signed Will Parks just as a bit of a safety net. I only have him on the team for one year, so it's really not that big of a deal. Morgan Burnett can actually probably be cut now. It frees up a little bit of money. I'm going to cut Morgan Burnett. He's not really doing anything on this team. I'd rather have the couple million dollars we save by releasing him. Mike Hilton, though, will be the slot corner for this team. I think he can do fine in that role. The defensive line, it looks exactly the same. Olivier Vernon is going to stay on the team. How much do we save by cutting him? Oh, we save $15.5 million, but that's just because this is his final season. I'm just going to let his contract expire. I'm good with him on the team for this season. Even though it might be likely he gets cut in real life, nothing exactly happened yet. If he were cut in real life, I would release him. But since nothing has happened, at least at the point of me recording this video, I'm going to use that as a way to keep him for this final season. I should say for his final season. This isn't the last year of the rebuild, but this is his last year being on the team. At week nine here, we are five and two. So the team is playing really well. Four and four for the Colts, though. They're not doing too bad. The Colts are usually a really good team in simulation as well. The Bengals are four and three. The Ravens four and four and the Steelers down there at two and five. I really hope we can make the playoffs this season. I feel like we should be able to just on the back of the Browns cheese alone. 
But on the offense, we have a couple players who look a little bit different. Baker Mayfield is up to a 79 overall. I think Mekhi Becton went up a little bit in his overall. And then defensively, Xavier McKinney has star development. I think he was the only player to reveal. He's up to a 76 too. He's already a better player than Will Parks, which is really cool to see. Hopefully he's having a good season of his own. But who has to come back to the team? Of course, Olivier Vernon is here. He's actually the top impending free agent, which is nice. Maybe we're going to have a lot of money then. David Njoku and Larry Ogunjobi, I think, are two players I want. Those are the only two players I think I'm going to bring back to the team. And just like that, they are both re-signing, so that's nice to see. We made the playoffs, and we got a first-round bye, but we did lose in Week 17. A little unfortunate, so no 14-2 season for us. We finished 12-4, though. That's a really good year. 11-5 for the Ravens. We just barely came out on top over them. Baker Mayfield is incredible in this game. 4,436 yards, 46 passing touchdowns, 11 interceptions. A crazy season for him to have. He's probably going to be top 5 for MVP. Nick Chubb was also awesome this year, 1,322 yards, 5 yards per carry, 7 rushing touchdowns. Odell had 20 receiving touchdowns, <laughs> 97 catches, 1,284 yards, 20 touchdowns. I just want to let you know, at one point this year, Odell was frustrated. I got the little prompt for it. How in the world were you ever frustrated when you're scoring more than one touchdown per game? Jarvis Landry had 1,025 yards with 10 touchdowns. That's a really good year for him to have too. David Njoku, 829 yards. Not bad at all. Justin Jefferson gets six touchdowns. This team played super well in offense. The offensive line played out of their minds considering we had 60% of it made up of rookies. Okay, Makai Becton letting up 11 sacks being the most. That's not even that bad. Joe Schobert had 107 tackles, leading the team. Tackles for loss, we have 14 for Olivier Vernon, 13 for Miles Garrett, who easily leads the team in sacks with 15. Nearly doubles Olivier Vernon and Larry Ogunjobi. Gotta love me some Larry Ogunjobi. 12 tackles for loss, 8 sacks. That's a really good season to have. We have three picks for Mike Hilton and Rodney McLeod, two for Joe Schobert and Xavier McKinney, one for Mac Wilson, Denzel Ward, and Jermaine Grace. We had no defensive touchdowns, but we do have a safety from Miles Garrett. Any forced fumbles? Yeah, we have one recovered by Mike Hilton for that one yard. We were first in the NFL on offense. I feel like defense was probably like at least the top half. We were first on defense as well. Okay, we were just the best team in terms of yards there. Baker Mayfield wins MVP. Okay, so he goes from being a really good quarterback to a bad quarterback back to a really good quarterback again. Really strange roller coaster kind of uh, career so far for Baker Mayfield. No Nick Chubb on this list. That's okay though. AFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Baker Mayfield as well. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Von Miller. Miles Garrett is actually really low. I expect him to be higher than that, but at 10, I'll still take it. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Tua. Justin Jefferson at number 6. Defensive Rookie of the Year is Grant Delpit. He goes to the Raiders. Xavier McKinney, though, at number 3. Would have been really cool if McKinney could have won that, but it's all good. We have to take on the team we just lost to two weeks ago. This should be a very interesting game. The Ravens are probably a higher overall. Yeah, they are. They're an 84. Of course, Lamar Jackson... Earl Thomas, there are two X-Factors. We're in 83. We only have one X-Factor, and it's Nick Chubb. But hopefully, we can come out with a victory here. I expect to break the playoffs next year, so I'm not going to bother hopping into any of these games. But we do win that game 28-14. to And now we have to take on the Jaguars. Their only X-Factor is Clayus Campbell. They're an 80 overall. Another pretty good team in Madden, but I think we can win this one. We're going straight to the Super Bowl here. Did we end up winning that game? We did, and we have to go up against the Saints. Honestly, I'm just going to send by this one. No, I'm not. I'll hop into the Super Bowl. Let me do that. I probably won't play like any of this. Let me also check out who went up in development before I actually hop into the game. I saw one player who did go up in development. It is Odell Beckham Jr. And also, Baker Mayfield has seven more experience points because he won MVP. Good lord. He's up to superstar as well. That is awesome. I don't think anyone went up in development on this side of the ball. All good, though. I was really hoping like Xavier McKinney maybe would have been a superstar at this point. It's fine. Let me upgrade Baker Mayfield all the way to an 87 overall. He's going to be an 89, though, with confidence. That's incredible. Let's hop into this game and see if we can take down the Saints year one. Okay, this game is going pretty well for us here. It's 23 to 13, a two-possession game. 30 to 13, that's no longer a two-possession game. 30 to 20, we will win the Super Bowl here. The first full season we have. That's really cool to see. It's a really good start to the rebuild. But now watch, we just never make it back to the playoffs again or something because I'm just that unlucky sometimes. We have nobody who I want to bring back at this point, so let's just go straight into free agency. I'm looking for a new edge rusher, though, because we don't have Olivia Vernon, and I'm probably not going to be in a position to take one in the draft we have tack mckinley here who i will likely go after we technically need a left end though i don't think it's that big of a difference could go after calais campbell to be honest he's kind of big but he could probably rush the edge if we really need him to i think i am going to go after tack mckinley though because he does have superstar development now okay i gave out contracts to a few different people let's see who accepted we got alex anzalone we got devin mccordy this year <laughs> i tried to get him last year of course it didn't work and we got tack mckinley the Dolphins open the draft here with the first two picks. Our first pick is the last pick of the first round, of course, after winning the Super Bowl. 
But here we are. Let's see who we should take. I'm actually kind of upset for one reason, and I'll show you why. Is he even still available? He is still here. Okay, so this guy was supposed to be an early first round player, and now he's projected to go late second round. So I didn't even need Tack McKinley. I really want to draft this guy, but I think he's going to have normal, and I'm sort of worried about it. Maybe we can trade up and take him in the second round or something. I could go defensive tackle, late second rounder, mid first round talent. I don't really want to take this guy right now either. Like, is there anyone left in the first? Probably not. There are a couple of running backs. I could actually use a backup running back, and I feel like this guy is going to be good. There's a wide receiver who skipped the combine. That's so tempting, but I'm not going to do it. There's also a tight end who skipped the combine. Geo Whitley. I'm going to throw him on my draft board. Maybe we can land him with one of our next picks. I guess at this point, then, I'm going to go... It's either defensive tackle or defensive end. Who do I take? I think I'm just going to go Jalen Finley. Even though we don't really need him. I don't really need anybody right now, to be honest. Like, the team is in a really good spot. I'm going to take the best player available, and I think it's him. He's a 77. I was right, though. He only has normal development. That's so unlucky. If he would have had star or something, I probably would start him over Tack McKinley, to be honest. I think because of the normal, though, I will be starting Tack McKinley this next year. I knew he was going to have normal just because of how far he fell down the draft boards. I'm not going to be able to land that defensive tackle. I didn't try it up or anything. It's not that big of a deal. We still do have a pretty good defensive tackle duo, so I'm not that worried about it. Let's see if he's still available. I highly doubt it. Yeah, he's not here anymore. Okay, let's see if this tight end is here, though, who skipped the combine. He actually still is before I just you know take him. Let's see if there's anybody else I'd rather have the next player I want on my draft board is Javante Gabriel So I think it's worth it honestly just to take this guy now Geo Whitley I am fully aware he's probably awful, but it's worth the risk to draft a stud. Okay. He's a 68. That's not even that bad 80 speed 74 catching 80 acceleration we don't really need a tight end, but I guess I'll take him as a backup. That middle linebacker was selected, so instead I'm just going to go with Ali Batten, a cornerback. He's a 70 overall. He's actually really not bad whatsoever. 92 speed, 91 acceleration, good agility, good zone coverage. Okay. Horrible man coverage, but maybe he can get some playing time and go up an overall. We also don't have like anyone else scouted, to be honest. But we do have a lot of fourth round draft picks. We have three, so I'm going to trade away this one here. I'm going to take a third round draft pick next year, I think, from the 49ers. That's some pretty good value there. Even if it's a bad third round draft pick, I'll still take a third there for a fourth now. Okay, so we're going to take a complete shot in the dark here. Let's see if I can find anyone who looks remotely decent. Okay, this guy is the fastest and the strongest right guard. He is definitely worth the selection. He's a 68. That was actually a really good draft pick for being completely blind. He's ranked number 53. We took him at number 113. I would totally do that again if I could. I'm going to take one more complete random shot in the dark to see if I can land anyone decent. I'm settling on another offensive lineman, the second strongest right tackle. Welcome to the team. He's a 69, dude. That's all you got to do to draft offensive lineman. Just go with strength. He actually looks really solid as well. He's probably not going to play all that much. But a 69 overall right tackle at the end of the fourth round is a really good draft pick. I don't think I drafted a single hidden development player that entire draft, which is kind of disappointing. But it's all right. We got one of the best players in the entire class overall wise, but he's really not going to get all that much playing time. I just went with him in case he had hidden. I think if he had hidden, he'd be worth starting. The best player in the class, though, was Connor Jones, a 78 overall left end. He looks really nice as well. 288 pounds, but he is extremely balanced. He could have played in our system super, super well with 80 speed, 91 strength, 84 tackle, 84 acceleration. Yeah, he's a really, really good defensive end. The Dolphins also got the second ranked player. Ellis Chapman, a 77 overall elusive back, 92 speed, 94 acceleration, 91 agility, 72 catching as well. They even had the second draft pick as well, so they probably got another player who was actually pretty decent. Let me see how the, the Dolphins drafted. Yeah, the second player they took was Willis Smith, a 75 overall receiver, 6 foot 3, 92 speed, 88 acceleration, 79 catching. They had a really good draft. The team drafted me a 64 overall hidden development fullback. I love it. <laughs> Here's the team for the second season. It's an 83 overall, 83 offense, 85 defense. I have a really good feeling this team will make it back into the playoffs again. On the offense, though, nothing really changed. The team just developed, which is really cool to see. Like, the offensive linemen are all going up and overall. The offensive line looks way better than from when we started. Baker Mayfield is up to an 87 overall. He went up a ton. He also changed development. Odell changed development. Hopefully, he can have another crazy season again. And then defensively, we added a new outside linebacker. Alex Anzalone slid it to left. Christian Kirksey is just our backup middle now. I was going to have Anzalone be the backup middle, but I figured why not get him some playing time. He is better than Kirksey at this point, so I figured it was probably the better option. Devin McCourty is finally on the team. He didn't join last year. and definitely regretted that because we won the Super Bowl, and he is now the starting free safety. On the defensive line, we have Tack McKinley. We also added Finley to the team. 
The team looks pretty cool. I think this team can definitely make it back to the playoffs. Let me spend my coach experience and I'll start simulating. The computer also drafted me another hidden development player, this time a 58 overall receiver. How are they better at drafting hidden development guys than I am? This is stupid. <laughs> the team is doing a bit worse than they were last year at this point. We are four and three. We have to go up against the five and two Jets. The Jets are actually doing really well this year. The Ravens are five and two. The Bengals three, three and one. The Steelers two and five. Okay. I hope we can make a pretty good second half run though and still make it into the playoffs. On the offense though, Makai Becton is finally up into the 80s. He's a solid AD overall right now, which is pretty nice. Defensively, Xavier McKinney is also in the 80s, being an 80 overall. Okay, not looking too bad. These younger guys are still developing well for us, so that's pretty cool. But Miles Garrett has to come back to the team. Of course, we gave him that fifth year option last year at this time. Oh, Nick Chubb, Baker Mayfield, Denzel Ward. This is going to be extremely expensive. I think we should be able to get all these guys back though. I'm gonna try my best to do so. The only player I was able to get on the first try was Miles Garrett. Everyone else rejected. Let's try this again next week. Okay, Nick Chubb is coming back to the team. Thank you for that one. Baker Mayfield is such a big contract, man. The contract length is good, but that's about it. Everything else has to be improved. Are you kidding me, friend? Do you want that contract? No, can you improve the bonus? <laughs> We're getting there. We are getting there. Denzel Ward, salary and length are great. Bonus could be better. Let's knock this up to like 4.8. Do you want that one now? He does. Okay, at least Denzel Ward and Nick Chubb come back. Baker Mayfield still needs some work. Baker Mayfield is coming back to the team after I raised the bonus a little bit more. We made the playoffs and we got another first round bye. Let's go, man. We finished 11 and 5, 10 and 6 for the Ravens, 7, 8 and 1 for the Bengals, 5, 10 and 1 for the Steelers. How did Baker Mayfield play after that big contract extension? Actually, not super well. That's still a good season, but definitely not his MVP caliber season. Over 4,000 yards, almost 30 touchdowns with 10 picks. Kind of expect a little bit more from him, but still not awful. Nick Chubb was really good again, though. 1,359 yards, 11 touchdowns. He definitely deserved that contract. Receiving wise, nobody was over 1,000 yards, but we have some pretty good touchdown numbers. 7 for Jarvis Landry, 8 for Odell, 9 for David Njoku. He had a really good season. The offensive line was awesome this season. Makai Becton led up the most sacks with 5. That is so cool. We have 120 tackles though from Joe Schobert, 17 tackles for loss for Tack McKinley. He was a really good free agent acquisition. But then 20 and a half sacks for Miles Garrett, 9 and a half for Tack McKinley. Three interceptions for Greedy Williams, two for Denzel Ward, one for Joe Schobert, Alex Anzalone, and Mike Hilton. No defensive touchdowns, no safeties, and we have no blocked kicks. We have at least one forced fumble though from Miles Garrett, and he recovered it on his own, but did not go anywhere. There was zero fumble recovery uh, return yards. But second in the NFL on offense, Second in the NFL on defense, we got a little bit worse from last year, and Ryan Tannehill of the 15-1 Titans wins MVP. Okay then, Blake Bortles at number three, really interesting looking list. <laughs> Nobody from the Browns, AFC Offensive Player of the Year though is Ryan Tannehill. We have Baker Mayfield at number nine, not too bad I guess. Defensive Player of the Year is not Miles Garrett, he's at number three. Offensive Rookie of the Year is Lane Ramsey. He's probably a quarterback, because that's usually where the Steelers go. We have Geo Whitley there at number six. Don't even know who that is, to be honest, actually. I think he's our backup tight end, the more I think about it. Defensive Rookie of the Year is Connor Jones. Nobody from the Browns on this list. Okay, it's not that big of a deal. We didn't really draft anyone who started anyway. Let's talk to the general manager here. I'm not even really sure what this is about. Okay, so we're in the postseason. What happened? We got plus 20 morale. Oh, yeah, I've actually had that before. I just haven't had it in a little while. Let's advance to the divisional round and see who we have to go up against. We have to take on the Jets, who are 10-6. and 6. I think we beat them in the regular season, though. Let's see if we can take them down here. That would be pretty cool. They're in 81. We are in 85. Their only X Factor is Jamal Adams. We have a few now at this point. Let's advance to the conference championship. I'm looking to make this back-to-back-to-back, -to, -back -to, -back, to be honest. Let's see if we can do that. 35 to 28, we take down the Jets. We have to go up against the Ravens, who are in 85. We beat them last year in the playoffs, but the Ravens are a really solid team. Let's go straight to the Super Bowl. And I feel like if we're in it, we're going to have to take on the Seahawks. We are not in it, but the Seahawks are. So I was kind of right. We are not able to go back to back here. Not that big of a deal. Let's sim to the offseason. Let's see who's going to win the Super Bowl. I think the Seahawks are going to win this one. They do win 49 to 28. They kind of crushed the Ravens. But who went up in development rate? I'm not sure if I think Baker Mayfield should. He didn't go up in development. I think that makes sense. Nobody on the offense did. What about on the defense? Miles Garrett should be a superstar. I don't know how he's not. He got 20 and a half sacks. He's a 98 overall and he only has star development. That is so strange. Okay, well, do I want to bring back anyone to the team? I don't think so. Sheldon Richardson is the top free agent. I don't really think I want him. I should probably bring back Jamie Gillen or Guylen, however that's pronounced. I think it's Gillen. He's actually pretty solid. 
This is a pretty big contract though for a punter to be honest. Do you want that? He does want it. Okay, so he's back on the team. It's whatever. Let's advance into this free agency period and see who we can bring to the team. I'm in need of a defensive tackle at this point now. We have about $12 million to spend here in free agency. And Fred Warner is a free agent? He is never a free agent. Hold on a second. I may have to not go after a defensive tackle and just try to get Fred Warner on this team. I don't know if we're going to be able to, but I'm going to do my best. Okay, I was able to muster up enough money to just barely pass the Redskins in points. Can we please get Fred Warner? He is so good at this game. I would love to have him as our new middle linebacker. We did not get Fred Warner. Why do you not want to join this team, man? We just barely went back to the Super Bowl again. All right, whatever. Let's just sign someone else, I guess. We do need a free safety. Should I go after J.R. Alexander and move him to free safety? <laughs> I don't think I'm going to do that, but I don't really want Monte Nicholson. I do want to sign like a big name player, so I may try to go after Jair Alexander just to see what I can do with this team. I can't give him a contract. Okay, so that's out the window. There's not really anyone who I can sign now, so let's just go into the draft. We have the 30th pick here in the first round, so let's simulate straight to that pick. I have a couple players in mind who I could go with. I actually really wanted that strong safety. He was supposed to go in the second round, Rashawn Irvin. That's a bit frustrating. He's a 74 overall. He actually looked really good. The one defensive end who I wanted is also not available. Okay, so this can be kind of annoying. I really don't know who to go with at this point then. This Andrew Ball guy also doesn't look too bad. I could take him now, just in case Blackburn isn't anything special, because I really don't have anyone else who could come play safety. I could just sign a free agent, and honestly, that would probably be okay. There's a defensive tackle who I want really badly down here. I know nothing about him other than the fact that he is really strong. So I can probably sign that guy to start at defensive tackle. Since we do have Larry Ogunjobi, we don't need like the best number two defensive tackle. I think just based on that, I'm going to take this free safety now. I don't think he's going to be that good, but I don't really have any reason to trade this pick away or anything like that. So, Andrew Ball, welcome to the team. He's a 68 with normal. Okay, I was just at least hoping he'd have hidden. A bit unfortunate that he doesn't. We can make this final season work, though, because if I can't get a safety in the draft, like I said before, I can probably just snag one in free agency. I have two players left on my draft board, and they're both players I don't know anything about other than their combine. So, Keenan Vance is supposed to go mid-fourth round. He's supposed to go mid-fourth round. We're going to go Keenan Vance first. He's a 72 with hidden. Okay, he is definitely good enough to start. I'm really happy I was able to draft him. By the way, I had auto scouting on like this entire season. So the scout just did not do very well. <laughs> he didn't scout the positions I wanted him to. Let's go with Stan Blackburn now. Are you any good? You're a 70 with hidden. You're actually very good. You're probably going to play free safety for us this year. I think that draft went pretty well since I didn't really have, you know, the most information on a lot of these players. But we have two more hidden development guys on the team. I think they will both be starters for this final season. I'm perfectly fine with that. Let's check out the rest of the class, though. Who is the best player in the entire class? Kendrick Westerman. He has normal development only, but he is a really, really solid left tackle. Von Van Buren is a really good corner. I was thinking about taking this guy if he were available with my pick, but he was not... And he only has normal development. A bit unfortunate there, but he was actually a really good cornerback. Frank Boss, also a really nice looking center. He has hidden development. He goes to the uh, Broncos. Let's check out this strong safety who I missed out on. Rashawn Irvin. He went a pick before I was able to select him. Let's see what his development trait is because I just barely missed this guy. He only has star. Maybe our free safety has superstar or something. That would be hilarious. The team here for what will probably be the final season is an 84 overall. 85 offense, 83 defense. The offense is pretty much unchanged. I haven't really touched this offense in a couple years, and it's been fine. I think it can do just as fine again. Defensively, though, we did add a couple new players. We have a new starting defensive tackle. We have a new starting free safety as well. I think this team is looking really nice. I feel like they can make it back to the playoffs here once again. Hopefully, that's the case. Once again, the team is in the playoffs, and we have another first round bye. 14-2. I still can't go undefeated. I have not once gone undefeated in a video. I did go undefeated once, though, doing a rebuild battle against a subscriber a really long time ago. That's one of the closest records we can possibly get, only losing two games. It's alright, though. Baker Mayfield leads the league in passing this year. 4,337 yards, 45 touchdowns. Really similar to his MVP season two years ago. I feel like he can win it here again. Nick Chubb was dominant. 1,500 yards exactly. 5.3 yards per carry, 14 touchdowns. Odell also had a really similar season to his year two years ago. 88 catches, 1,373 yards, 18 receiving touchdowns. Jarvis Landry over 1,000 yards, 9 touchdowns. David Njoku, 5. Justin Jefferson gets 5 down there as well. The offensive line absolutely balled out this year. I love to see that. Defensively, we have 98 tackles from Joe Schobert. 13 tackles for loss for Tack McKinley, who actually has more sacks than Miles Garrett this year. He is 14 and a half. Tack McKinley, what a year. 
Three picks for Mike Hilton, three for Stan Blackburn, the rookie free safety, two for Greedy Williams, one for Alex Anzalone, Xavier McKinney, Joe Schobert, and Ali Batten. We have no touchdowns or safeties, but Keenan Vance, our rookie defensive tackle, gets one blocked kick. Any forced fumbles? We have one. It was recovered by Denzel Ward for zero yards. Okay, so we were first in the NFL in offense this year. Defense, are you first again? No, you are second. <laughs> We have been first or second every year in both of those categories. That's hilarious. Zeke, though, wins MVP. Baker Mayfield at number two. So close to winning it. Ryan Tannehill is still up here at number eight on the Falcons. AFC Offensive Player of the Year is Baker Mayfield. Nick Chubb is finally in this list at number six. Defensive Player of the Year is Zach Cunningham. Nobody from the Browns. Offensive Rookie of the Year is Sylvester Fitzgerald. This is a receiver. Sharif Thurman at number two. I don't know who you are at all, but you're a 61 overall. <laughs> Joey McQueen, I think he's a receiver here at number 9. Defensive Rookie of the Year is Glenn Pierman. Stan Blackburn, though, at number 3. He's also up to a 75, which isn't even too bad. Keenan Vance is up to a 77. He's up there at number 6. Maybe one of those guys is a superstar. I feel like Vance went up a lot throughout the season. Baker Mayfield is the best quarterback. The best running back is also Nick Chubb. I love that. Best wide receiver is Odell. We are running away with these. Jarvis Landry at number 8. Best offensive lineman does not go to a player on the Browns. It's fine, though. Makai Becton, I'm number seven. He's having a really good career for us right now. JC Treader at number nine. Best defensive lineman is JJ Watt. Attack McKinley at number two. Miles Garrett at number four. Best linebacker is Von Miller. Best defensive back is Kari Willis. Didn't expect to see him there, that's for sure. Best kicker is Josh Lambeau. Do we have our kicker? We do not. That's sad. We have to go up against the Steelers right now. They're 9-7, and seven, but quickly before I do that, let's check out the development of these guys on defense who we drafted. Give me one superstar. That would be so cool. We do not. Okay, they're both stars. It's fine, though. I'll take a star any day. But let's hop into the game here against the Steelers. I may actually hop into this one and play myself a little bit. We'll see what happens. They're at 85 overall. Also, Cam Hayward has unstoppable force. I don't think he's normally an X-Factor. Fred Warner's on the Steelers. Oh, man. This is a bad game, dude. We have to come out and crush them. Fred Warner didn't want to join our team, so he went to a divisional rival of ours. I hate Fred Warner, man. This game is so close right now, and we're gonna lose. The offense was actually doing pretty well there at the end of the game. That's so unfortunate. I guess I should have hopped in there. That's on me. I thought they can win it themselves. I really thought they were going to be in a position to, because they were driving down the field a little bit at the end. We were losing at that point, but I had faith in them. I feel like if I came in, I would have just, like, tossed a pick, and you guys would have been even more mad at me. That's an annoying way to end a rebuild, but it's okay. It was still a really successful one. Let's sim by Super Bowl 57. The Cowboys and the Chiefs are in it. The winner is going to be the Chiefs, 24-21. to Let's just quickly check out if anyone went up in development here on our team. Baker Mayfield is now an X-Factor. If we would have made it to the Super Bowl, this game would have been so easy, I think. Look at this offense, man. Baker Mayfield, Nick Chubb, Odell Beckham Jr., all X-Factors. I still don't think anybody went up in development here on defense, like, this entire time. I don't know how Miles Garrett hasn't. Tack McKinley had a great season as well. He should probably be an X-Factor at this point. It's all good, though. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed this one, and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.